with um, a vice president of our team at the river. Um, one thing I wanted to mention about our organization is that um, no one who pays salary uh, no one is compensated for But we not only advocate, um, we also educate, and we are, and we are also great stewards of our San Diego. Um, I just completed a, uh, the uh, class, the field class at the, uh, Howard T. Coburn um, Springs Institute, a uh, class studying um, the springs in the aquifer, and also we did some field study as well. It's very interesting. Um, some of the things that I learned um, was the Santa Fe Springs have high economic value, directly dependent upon springs in the river. Our private springs, dive shops and outfitters, community and kayak outfitters, local businesses, lodging, and of course a water bottle plant, which has a total estimated economic impact of 20 plus million dollars. Um, the existing Santa Fe River Spring Shed has declined from 1775 <coughs> square miles historically to about 1114 square miles in 2008, which is an estimated reduction in contributing area of 661 square miles or about 37%. Uh, the Santa Fe River flows are declining in spite of relatively constant <coughs> rainfall. From the 1900s to 2010, uh, rainfall has been documented, and it's, it's been pretty much the same um, average from that period of time to, to 2010. The problem being is that um, more water is being consumed, so our aquifer levels are declining. Um, the flow trend line departed from the historic normal in the 1960s. For an average 50-inch rainfall a year, Santa Fe River flows have declined by about 500 uh, cubic feet or 323 million gallons per day. That's a 33% decline. Uh, and the, uh, only the largest wells need a consumption use permit. All the dark areas, the dark spots, are in the Swanee Water Building Management District and at least over 29,000 consumptive use permits um, that are being actively used today. Which is, which is not, that's a lot of consumptive use permits. Um, the Santa Fe and Chucky River and Spring flows are declining. Um, average flows in the lower Santa Fe and Chucky and in their springs have declined by an estimated 30 to 40 percent. A significant portion of these flows declines can be attributed to an increase in the consumptive water uses throughout the North Florida. These flow declines are well beyond the range recognized as the decline. <coughs> Both the Santa Fe and the Itchtucking Rivers are outstanding Florida waterways and are protected by law from any form of degradation, yet Swanee River Water Management and the flow levels allow permanent combined flow reduction in these two rivers of 76 million gallons per day. The precautionary principle indicates that given uncertainty in the estimates of existing harm, the district should err on the side of caution and establish the most protective MF, MF balance defensible. Um, so we've got available best management practices which are economic voluntary and also um, basic management action, action plans also voluntary. Um, <coughs> my recommendation is to make them mandatory and not voluntary. I personally feel that that would make big um, significant supports um, establishing better minimum goal levels and um, 
agriculture and urban irrigation and fertilizer, fertilizer use control. We really need that um, included in the mandatory basic management for just management practices. Um, well, nitrogen control, that's not really sure. Um, we don't really need to look at that. That's not what you guys do. But science based limits, limits also on recreational uses. So, um, I do have some recommendations, um, as I said before, make um, best management practices and basic management action plans mandatory and not mandatory. Moratorium um, <coughs> on consumptive use permits. Also, um, limits on water use for lawns and gardens um, at the human use level. Um, and break crop, break plant, break time. I really feel that. Um, money should be given to farmers to um, plant crops that are not so um, dependent on water and fertilizer. I brought with me today, I did some research a uh, little bit on what crops would really grow well um, during the dry period of um, <laughs> Of um, like August, you know, it's really dry. You don't get much rain. And so I did a little bit of research myself because I do farm a little bit for my personal use. And I came across um, Chinese um, yard long peas. And I don't have a water um, monitor as well, but I did um, pay attention to how much I had to water to grow these things. These, these things are awesome. Um, they, they're really well yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Sure so I just thought uh, it's really dry. I really want to grow something that I can eat. So I, I did grow these. They required a little bit of water in the beginning, but I mean they really didn't require much watering or fertilization. I did not grow them at all to grow these things. But they're doing great. So you know, a suggestion, um, right crop, right time. And and also you need a whole lot less um, if you 